Hi there and welcome to the second in this devotional series from uh, Paul's letter to the church at Ephesus, the Ephesians. <clears throat> and today I'm reading from chapter 1, verses 7 to 10. In him, that's Jesus, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us with all wisdom and understanding. And he made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure to be purposed in Christ to be put into effect when the times have reached their fulfillment to bring all things in heaven and on earth together under one head even Christ so Paul says that God has done three things for us in Jesus first he has redeemed us through his blood through his life uh, for since, since ancient times, if someone runs out of money, if you're in debt, if you no longer have the means to support yourself, you can take something that you have that's of worth, something valuable, maybe uh, perhaps a, a ring like this one, perhaps a, uh, a piece of valuable jewellery or, or an ornament. This is silver something that used to be my mum's. You can take it to a pawnbroker they will value it and you leave it there and they give you essentially a payday loan and uh, you have a certain amount of time during which when you receive some money you can go and you can buy it back you can redeem it that's what it's called redeeming you buy it back it was yours then it wasn't and you get it back again and God redeemed us redeemed our lives in very ancient times if you were completely destitute you had no money left at all maybe a debt that you couldn't service you had no means of supporting yourself or your family you could sell you could pawn the one thing that you had left which was yourself you could sell or trade yourself into slavery as a means of dealing with the debt and then your your master took on responsibility for your debt and to provide for your livelihood and uh, in ancient times that was one of the commonest perhaps the commonest way of people getting into slavery it kind of fulfilled the joint functions of, of a bankruptcy procedure and the welfare state and that's how it worked and the people who read this letter originally would have been very familiar with that some of them perhaps had slaves themselves some of them were slaves and the Bible says that's how it was for us. We built up a debt of sin, <clears throat> a debt of our, uh, our guilt for all of the wrong things that we've done uh, to other people, the way we've hurt people, the way we've wronged people. That is a debt that we can't pay. And that is a debt to God for the corruption that we have added to all the other corruptions that we personally have added to all of the corruption that humanity has added to God's creation and so uh, God became man and he offered up the one thing that had sufficient value to cover the sum total of all our finite lives and that was his infinite and eternal life and he offered that up to pay the debt and to buy us out of slavery. Paul said in another of his letters that whoever sins is a slave to sin. It becomes a habit that we can't break free of. That selfish way of thinking and behaviour and attitude. And so God redeemed us out of that and he set us free. And then he remitted our sins. He forgave our sins. He remitted the sentence. He cancelled it. Uh, one of the Old Testament prophets said that he removed our sins from us as far as the east is from the west, totally separated. And another prophet said, your sins and your iniquities, I will not remember any longer. God forgot them. He <laughs> committed himself to not bringing them up again. That kind of conversation, of oh, that's just typical of you that's exactly what you did back in 1983 that conversation just doesn't happen I can honestly say that in all the times when I've maybe been in prayer contemplation just seeking God for a word and sense that God has spoken to me that that conversation has never occurred <coughs> he is committed to he will not keep bringing them up again 
it's over and dusted. The slate is wiped clean. We are clean. We have a fresh start in him. And then having redeemed us, having remitted our sin and our sentence, he revealed his purpose to us. Having bought us out of slavery, he didn't treat us like slaves. He, it says, he, he adopted us as his children and he gave us the full rights of heirs. We saw that in the first in this series. So he revealed his will and purpose to us. It's not just a, you know, you're my robot slave, crank you out, here's, here's your dog, do it, da, 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 da. I'm not telling you anything, I'm not explaining anything, just get on with it. No, he revealed his will and purpose to bring everything together under Jesus. And so we have a choice to make. God has done that. We didn't contribute anything to it. We didn't ask for it. We didn't pay for it. He has done it. The question is then, what will we do? Do we then say, well, thank you very much, and just carry on as we were, accumulating more debt of sin from start again? In which case, Paul says, there remains no sacrifice for sin. It, the, the job was done, and you, you, you just start carrying on building it up again. Or will we accept our position as servants of Christ? Will we come under that authority that God is committed to establish for the benefit of all mankind? Will we yield up to his way of love and grace and peace and mercy? Will we forgive as we've been forgiven? <clears throat> Will we live together peaceably, working out our differences? Or will we continue to fight and strive and demand my rights? Yeah, in this period of time, everyone uh, is going to have different opinions. Everyone, we live in days when everyone has a different opinion and those opinions are magnified by social media and polarised and, and everybody's got an extreme point of view. And you know, We see it in the media, we see it on the streets, we see it on the internet. Will we set that aside and say, no, I, I choose to come under the unifying authority of Christ in my life? Will I say, yes to him and not keep accumulating another debt of sin it having once been forgiven <clears throat> so may god help us to be thankful for his redeeming work his uh, forgiving and remitting work and for the revelation that he's given us of all that he's doing that we have a good future the future is not bleak the future is one of grace and peace, one where we are going to live together in peace and harmony and free of all this angst and argument and, and fighting. <clears throat> Will we embrace that today? May God help us as believers in him. And as we come out of lockdown, and we all have different opinions of going into lockdown and coming out and how it ought to be and how church ought to operate, looking to the future, Let's have grace to, sure, present your point of view. But, you know, if you present an argument and people aren't persuaded, to be honest, it's probably not a great argument. Let us choose, rather, to agree with one another, as Paul said, to set aside our, our own personal desires, even our needs, for the sake of that unity in Christ that God calls us to. Amen. <laughs>